NVIDIA reported a massive 122% revenue growth on surging demand for its data center chips, and yet the stock was down 8% after hours. NVIDIA reported earnings after the bell that beat Wall Street's expectations and provided stronger than expected guidance for the current quarter. So why did it fall 8% after hours? Now, the good news is NVIDIA stock has already started to recover. It recovered quite a bit of those losses on Thursday, and I do believe the future outlook for NVIDIA is quite good. I'm gonna give you my prediction in this video of where I see NVIDIA stock going in the future. First, I wanna break you down what happened with NVIDIA's earnings and really dig into their forward guidance to kind of understand what we can expect for NVIDIA stock over the next few months. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Stock Curry. I'm a former Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley investment banker, and I have over 25 years of trading experience. NVIDIA's earnings per share came in at 68 cents adjusted versus 64 cents expected. Revenue came in at 30 billion versus 28 billion expected, beating both revenue and profit expectations. Revenue continues to surge at the chip maker, rising 122% on an annual basis during the quarter. But here's where we start to run into problems. That follows three straight periods of year-over-year -year growth in excess of 200%. So while 122% is amazing, it is significantly less than the 200% NVIDIA was seeing. But there are good reasons why NVIDIA stock did not drop further, and that is because their profits were outstanding. Net income more than doubled to $16.6 billion in the quarter from $6.18 billion in the year-ago period. So even though revenue growth slowed down, their profits were incredible. Now, this was due in large part to the gross margins, which are quite high, but there is another reason why the stock fell after earnings, and it has to do with gross margins. NVIDIA said its gross margin slipped in the quarter to 75.1% from 78.4% in the prior period, although it's still up from 70% a year ago. There's another reason why NVIDIA stock fell after earnings, and that had to do with their forward guidance. NVIDIA's sale forecast failed to meet the lofty expectations of investors. In short, investors were pricing in blowout earnings, and while NVIDIA's earnings were better than expected, they weren't quite the blowout earnings that the stock was pricing in. NVIDIA's forward P.E. ratio right now is at 47.39. That is the highest the forward P.E. ratio has been in over a year. Investors were pricing in extremely good earnings, as good as they had been over a year ago, and NVIDIA just could not quite meet those high expectations. That said, even though this past quarter was not as good as investors had hoped, there is hope for a major turnaround and a recovery in the future. When it comes to forward guidance, the stock fell a little bit because third quarter revenue is going to be about $32.5 billion. And while that is higher than the $31.9 billion average that analysts had predicted, estimates had ranged as high as $37.9 billion. Again, $32.5 billion was better than expected, but not nearly as good as the lofty expectations that the stock price was pricing in. That said, once we get to Q4, the company signaled that it was working through production snags with its highly anticipated new Blackwell chip, which did weigh on NVIDIA stock in late trading, but as you're about to see here in a minute, is actually a good thing. Now, before I get into the reasons why NVIDIA stock could skyrocket in 2025, we first have to go over the risks, because no investment is without risk. Most of NVIDIA's growth comes from a small group of customers. About 40% of NVIDIA's revenue stems from large data center operations like Alphabet Inc.'s Google and Meta platforms. Although Meta and others have increased their capital expenditure budgets this earnings season, there is concern that the amount of infrastructure being put into place exceeds current requirements, and that could lead to a bubble. 
In short, the risk to NVIDIA stock is that the 40% of customers that are buying all of this infrastructure might be near the end of their buying cycle, and that could potentially cause a significant revenue drop for NVIDIA in Q4 and beyond. That is the risk to the stock that you have to be concerned about. But if that risk ends up not playing out, then the future outlook for NVIDIA is quite good. That said, in the short term, at least for the next three months, we are going to have some issues that we've got to deal with. While NVIDIA's operating margin was very high, it narrowed from the previous quarter. That said, NVIDIA's adjusted gross margins should stay in the 75% range for the rest of the year. 75% gross margin is massive. And so long as NVIDIA can maintain that 75% gross margin and they can see their revenues increase, then we should also see profits increase by the same amount that revenues increase. Will NVIDIA actually be able to increase revenues? The concern is that the pace of NVIDIA's sequential sales growth has been slowing for four quarters. NVIDIA's $30 billion in revenue for the second quarter from fiscal year 2024 was up 122% from the year ago quarter, but it was only up 15.3% from the fiscal year first quarter. Revenue growth is slowing down and continues to slow down, which is the major concern for NVIDIA's stock valuation. In 2023, revenue growth was 200%. In 2024, it was 122%. But if NVIDIA continues to grow revenues at 15% per quarter, then in 2025, revenue growth is only going to be 75%. So slowing revenue growth is the biggest concern for investors at the current time. But if that slowing revenue growth was in fact expected to continue, we would have seen NVIDIA stock fall much further. The good news is that revenue growth is expected to turn around in Q4 and skyrocket in 2025. Now, even though revenue growth is expected to turn around, there was also concern about gross margins slowing down. But I do believe those concerns are unfounded since two years ago, NVIDIA's gross margins are around 45 to 65%, and now they're all the way up to 75%. Now, there is another reason why NVIDIA stock is expected to increase in price starting in Q4 and beyond. And that is the fact that NVIDIA is delivering a big boost to its buyback program. The company is increasing its share repurchase authorization by $50 billion, and it still had $7.5 billion remaining on a prior authorization as of the end of the second quarter. NVIDIA spent $7.2 billion on stock buybacks in Q2, which was more than double a year ago, and that stock buyback is expected to increase over the next few quarters. The fact that NVIDIA is not only buying back stock, but buying back stock at an ever increasing pace is a very good thing. And it should help increase the price of NVIDIA since instead of getting share dilution from a share offering, you're actually getting an increase in shareholder value from the stock buybacks. So even if everything stayed the same for NVIDIA, the stock buybacks alone should increase the price of NVIDIA stock. Now, we do have some issues that we have to get through for Q3 with a slowdown in revenue and a slowdown in gross margins, but all of that is expected to turn around in Q4. NVIDIA gave some clues about the fourth quarter. Given demand expectations, NVIDIA has visibility into a quote-unquote growth opportunity in the fourth quarter. The company will also have early shipments of its new Blackwell chip by then. What is this growth opportunity for Q4? Well, NVIDIA didn't say, but if I had a guess, I would say their next generation chip after Blackwell is probably going to start sales. And if it does, that could be a major revenue boost for NVIDIA in Q4. So this is good news for Q4, even though it's a little bit of bad news for Q3. In a minute, I'm going to explain where I see NVIDIA stock going. 
first, I want to touch upon the new Blackwell chips briefly because one of the reasons why NVIDIA's stock has been struggling recently is due to some production hiccups with the new Blackwell chip. NVIDIA said it changed its Blackwell mask in order to improve production yields. That means the Blackwell production ramp is scheduled to begin in the fourth quarter and continue throughout fiscal year 2026. NVIDIA expects to ship several billion dollars in Blackwell revenue in the fiscal fourth quarter. NVIDIA would see a lot of Blackwell revenue this fiscal year, but even better, Cress also said in her remarks that the current demand for its current generation hopper chip is strong and shipments are expected to increase in the second half of fiscal 2025. That means not only is NVIDIA's revenue expected to get a major boost in Q4, but that revenue is expected to increase even further throughout all of 2025. And if NVIDIA can maintain these 75% gross profit margins, which I do believe those gross profit margins are actually going to increase once they start selling their next generation chip, possibly as early as Q4, then NVIDIA stock should turn around and start to rally once again. So what is my price prediction for NVIDIA stock? Where do I see the stock going in the future? Well, let me start out by saying this. Q3 for the next three months might be a little bit of a hiccup. Investors might not be able to look past the fact that revenue growth is slowing down, that gross margins have slowed down, and we might see a little bit of a sell-off in the stock over the next three months. But after that, and Q4 comes in and we start getting those Q4 forecasts. We start seeing revenue pick back up. I do believe that NVIDIA stock is going to turn around and start to rally once again, hitting brand new all-time highs, possibly in Q4. But in my mind, there's a very good chance we'll hit those new all-time highs by 2025 and then continue to rise from there. So if we do in fact see a dip in NVIDIA stock price over the next three months, I personally believe this would be a great buy the dip opportunity in anticipation of NVIDIA stock rallying starting in Q4 and throughout all of 2025. Now, before I go, I do want to share some exciting news about something I've never done before. On Saturday, September 7th, I am hosting a live masterclass. This is the first time I've ever done this. It might be the only time I ever do this. In the live masterclass, I'm going to be teaching you what I learned at Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley as far as how professional traders make money in the stock market. More importantly, how they keep that money and don't lose it. What I have seen over the past couple of years being on YouTube is that a lot of retail traders actually gamble in the market without even realizing it. So what I want to do is take some time on Saturday, September 7th, that's next Saturday, to go through and give you a live masterclass training to teach you how Wall Street professionals trade. I want to show you the Wall Street way. I want to show you the proper way to trade and make money in the stock market and how these people make billions and trillions of dollars every single year while most retail investors struggle. If you want to sign up for that live masterclass, you do have to register for it. There is a link to register down in the description of this video. It'll be the first link in the description. And I hope to see you guys there. It's going to be live so you guys have a chance to ask me questions as we're going through the class. And I'll be able to touch on some things that maybe I didn't even think of that you might be struggling with. So Saturday, September 7th, make sure you register for that. You'd have to be registered to join. And again, the link for that is the first link in the description below.